There are two things commander players hate most. Other players taking control of their spells and permanents, and simply not letting them play the game. So in today's video, we're going to cover three of the most evil commanders that do exactly just that. First, we're going to start with the most innocent looking one of the lot, Gadok Teague. Originally printed back in Lorwyn, Gadok Teague is a two mana green white 2-2 two -two that says, non-creature spells with mana value four or greater can't be cast, and non-creature spells with X in their mana cost can't be cast. It's not until you play against this card, you suddenly realize Gadok Teague stops a lot of powerful spells, all for just two mana. We're talking about most board wipes, Wrath of God, Day of Judgment, Damnation, Chain Reaction, Blasphemous Act, Osteria Command, and even the most hated card in Commander, Farewell. He also stops powerful staples like Force of Will, The Great Henge, Bolas' Citadel, Anointed Procession, Doubling Season, and the Prismatic Bridge. And not only does Gadok stop those, but also some of the best combo finishes in the game. We're talking about Finale of Devastation, Green Sun Zenith, Chord of Cooling, Exsanguinate, Storm King's Thunder, Torment of Hailfire, and Awaken the Woods. Okay, so we've seen the commander. What does the rest of the deck look like? Gadok Teague is generally best paired with a Hate Bears deck. A Hate Bear is generally a 2 mana 2-2 two -two creature with a static ability that negatively impacts the game. While not a 2-2, Thalia, Guardian of Thraben, is probably the most well-known Hate Bear. Her powerful static ability will slow down most control decks a full turn, and perhaps my favorite interaction, she even makes free spells cost one more. So if your opponent completely taps out to play Itali, Primal Conqueror, if they hit four non-creature spells, they won't be able to cast any of them. Joining Thalia, you'll want her counterpart, Thalia, Heretic, Cathar, who again helps slows down the game by making sure non-basic lands and creatures your opponents play enter tapped. There's Avon Mind Sensor and Leonin Arbiter to prevent players from searching their libraries efficiently. Dranith Magistrate just straight up stops commanders from being cast from the command zone, as well as stopping a number of other mechanics. Containment Priest stops token generation and reanimation, and Collector Oof completely shuts down treasures and a number of other artifacts. Usually these sorts of creature-based decks are weak to board wipes, but thanks to Gadok, you're unlikely to be seeing any of those. But of course, single targeted removal can still come into play. Thankfully, Green White is excellent at protecting things. Mother of Runes and Giver of Runes are excellent creature-based protection, while cards like Hero Intervention, Veil of Summer, Tamiyo Safekeeping, and Teferi's Protection can help with anything else that slips through the cracks. To ensure you've always got some protection spells in hand, make sure the deck has some card draw. Beast Whisperer, Elemental Bond, and Auron Frostfang can all help here. And to actually win the game, Beastmaster's Ascension, Moonshaker Cavalry, and Crater Hoof Behemoth can turn your hate bears into deadly threats. One rules thing to clarify, cost reduction does not get around Gadok's effect. If Gadok is in play along with seven other creatures, you cannot play Blasphemous Act. Gadok simply looks at the printed mana value in the top right corner of the card. The same is said for cards that allow you to cast spells without paying their mana cost. If the printed mana value is four or more, and it's a non-creature spell, Gadog stops it. On to our next evil commander, we have Send Triplets. Send Triplets is a five mana Esper 3-3 that says, at the beginning of your upkeep, choose target opponent. This turn, that player can't cast spells or activate abilities and plays with their hand revealed. You may play lands and cast spells from that player's hand this turn. Being able to steal someone's combo or use their own removal on their own creatures is so satisfying. And as an added bonus, you get a single targeted Grand Abolisher effect too. There's a few different ways to build Send Triplets. I personally have an Esper Stacks deck, but for this video, we're going all in on the play your opponent's cards theme. Now, one thing to point out with Send Triplets ability, unlike Xanathar's ability, Send Triplets won't fix your mana for you. So you'll need to make sure you either target someone in Esper colors or run some mana fixers like Celestial Dawn, Mycosynth Lattice, Chromatic Lantern, or Chromatic Orrery. A couple of other cards that are a must for this deck is Telepathy and Paradox Haze. For just a single blue mana, Telepathy lets you see all the cards in your opponent's hands so you know who best to target with Sen's ability. And Paradox Haze is a three mana enchantment that enchants a player and gives them an additional upkeep. So with Sen Triplets in play, you can target two players during your turn. On this topic, a lot of people will suggest Sphinx of the Second Sun, but this has to be one of the most misread cards ever. You do not 
get a beginning step at the start of your post-combat main phase. You get it after your post-combat main phase. So while yes, untapping and getting an additional draw step is great, Send Triplets doesn't make full use of this card. You're better off playing Sakashima of a Thousand Faces or Sakashima the Imposter to just make copies of Send Triplets and get the extra trigger that way. Now thanks to the D&D sets, we actually got a ton of card stealing support. Elder Brain and Brain Stealer Dragon are two 7 mana 6-6s six that each steal a bunch of cards from your opponent and fixes your mana so you can cast those spells. One thing I like most about these cards is even if the creature dies, whatever cards you exiled with them, you still get to cast them later on if you want. Next, there's Rogue's Class, which turns all of your creatures into mini Night Veil Spectres. And when you hit level two, your creatures are now even harder to block, which means you're going to trigger that first ability even more. And on level three, you can reap your stolen gains and cash in all of those cards. This card does require a hefty mana investment, but the payoff can be huge. And of course, if we're talking about stealing cards, you can't forget about Opposition Agent, a 3 mana, 3-2 three with flash that lets you control your opponents while they're searching their library. And whatever they find, under your control of course, you get to exile and cast it later on if you want. Opposition Agent is excellent at disrupting players attempting to piece together combos. Tutor-like effects are running everywhere, so if you've got a spare one, put it in this deck. Now this deck can just chew through mana, so I highly recommend running the suite of Signets or Talismans if you can, as well as cards like Thran Dynamo and Gilded Lotus. Of course, since we're playing evil decks, be sure to include your Smothering Tithes. Oh, and because we're in blue, don't forget to bring your counter spells and diplomatic immunities. For our next evil commander, we've got Navinral Urbog Tyrant. Navinral is a six mana Esper Zombie, a three six that says, Hexproof from artifacts, creatures, and enchantments. When Navinral, Urbog Tyrant, enters the battlefield, create a tapped 2-2 black zombie creature token for each creature that died this turn. When Navinral dies, you may pay one. When you do, destroy all artifacts, creatures, and enchantments. The game plan for this deck is simple. We want to ramp into our commander as fast as possible, so we're playing the standard suite of early artifact ramp. Soul Ring, Signets, Talismans, and Stones, as well as some Altars if the budget allows. Now once we cast our commander, we're never casting them again because our deck is stacked with every not dead after all effect we can find. We've got Abnormal Endurance, Demonic Gift, Fake Your Own Death, Feign Death, Return to Action, Supernatural Stamina, Undying Malice, and Malachar Rebirth. There's also Undying Evil, Cauldron Haze, and Minions Return. And all we do now is just cast one of these spells on our commander and detonate them whenever things are looking a bit dicey. And to detonate our commander, we can simply use cards like Deadly Dispute, Village Right, Nasty End, and a whole bunch of others. And what's great is not only are we detonating the board and getting our commander back with a small zombie army, we're drawing cards at the same time so we can always have these detonators in hand. Oh, the dinosaur player is sending their army at us? What army? And don't forget, when Navinral comes back, they create a 2-2 black zombie for each creature that died this turn. So you'll always have an army at the ready to swing back and potentially take out a player. Now, repeatedly blowing up the board isn't going to win us the game. So the deck runs a small zombie and aristocrats theme to help us drain our opponents of life when you're clearing the board. Ellis Ilkor, Sadistic Pilgrim, Wayward Servant, Zulaport Cutthroat, Cruel Celebrant, and Blood Artist will all help in not only keeping our life total topped up, but ensure we're constantly putting pressure on our opponent's life totals. For zombie support, we've got Ratadrabic of Urborg, Wilhelt the Rock Cleaver, and the Scarab God. And because we're generating a bunch of zombie tokens, an indestructible Mondrak Glory Dominus is amazing here too. Now there is one truly evil combo in this deck that we briefly need to cover. Navinral's ability doesn't destroy lands. But have you seen this card before? Enchanted Evening, a five minor enchantment that makes all permanents enchantments. Hmm, I'm sure you can work out what you can do with this. So there's three absolutely evil commanders for you to experiment with. Be sure to like this video if I've opened your mind to the power of the dark side. Which evil commander should I cover next? Let me know in the comments down below 
Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.